Singapore is one of the world's highest adoption for car sharing at 7% nationwide. Today I welcome back Jenny to the channel. Hello, hi. Jenny is Blue SG Head of Singapore to hear how Singapore's pioneering EV car sharing service is evolving with growing demand. Please subscribe and stay updated for more videos on EVs. Jenny, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for having me back again. It's a good time for car sharing. Can you tell us more about this new member of your family? Yes, you know, it's been a very exciting few months. So we added the Opel Corsa to the Blue SG fleet of cars um, end of October, I think the last week of October last year. So since then, you know, response has been overwhelming. Um, and in fact, we still have many members who, you know, wave feedback to us that, you know, they still have, despite the new model joining the service for already coming to November, December, Jan, you know, coming to about six months, you know, a lot of our members feedback that they still have yet to manage to get, you know, their hands renting their car. So we are working on increasing more of this model into the fleet. Um, it's just that it's a little bit slower now because of the current circumstances. I understand COE prices are really high. Not just category B, A, E, motorcycle, every category. Government is monitoring. Jenny, can you give us a tour of your new Opel Corsas? Sure. Let's go. I'll be behind the camera as we follow Jenny. The Corsa is a five-door car, so it can easily take one, pass uh, one driver and four passengers, you know, compared to the blue car where it's only one driver, three passengers. So let's have a look. Oh, and perhaps, you know, let's take a look at the boot space before we go in. So you see that this has a relatively big boot space and the back seats of the Corsa can be actually pushed back all the way so to have an even bigger boot space. Yeah, I can see it's much wider down here. <laughs> That's my back, so you can see real life usage of the trunk space. Let's go into the car. So basically for the Corsa, we now have the ability to also connect to you know, um, the, the car play. So you can see actually you know, that there is a map feature you can do Spotify, you can do, uh, uh, you can do calls, you know, just by ensuring that you bring along your cable, your USB cable, or you can connect to the Bluetooth. So in addition, we now, for the, for the Corsa, this model also comes equipped with the rain sensor. So when it's raining and you know, in Singapore weather, it's always raining. So when you, when it rains and when you enable the rain sensor, basically the wiper will just automatically clean the, the, the windscreen. And depending on the speed you are driving, you know, uh, the speed of the, the wiper will go faster. So last but not least, we also have the lane axis here. Um, this button will allow you or the driver to be able to activate or deactivate the lane axis function. So typically when you are driving beyond a certain kilometers, let's say on the highway or on a, a faster road, and if you are not sticking into your, uh, on into your lane, you know, um, the safety feature will steer you back. The steering wheel will steer you back to your to your lane, if unless you filter. It's really good to see this new technology coming in, making drivers' lives easier. Jenny, I noticed that the driver's dashboard has some new upgrades compared to the blue car. Can you tell us what's different? Oh yes. So this dashboard gives you possibility to toggle, where you can see in a different view all your various trips that you are making. So, and it allows you to also see, you know, um, the charge state of the battery very clearly, you know, and how you are, how much you are driving, your utilization, so on and so forth. It's very useful to have. Now, we're going to join Tristan, who's going to give us a full tour of actually driving this car from beginning to end. So we'll see you outside again. Today, they gave me a ride on the new Opel Corsa. I've got Tristan. Tell us about yourself. Hi guys, I'm Tristan. I've uh, been with the service for about four years. Very excited when the uh, new Corsa E came out. Um, yeah, so ready to show you uh, a little bit about the new Corsa E and how we go, how we're going to drive around and use it. For newbies like me, how do we start getting into a blue SG car? Can you walk us through the steps? Yeah, so it's it's very simple. Um, it's pretty much the same thing as a normal blue car if you've used the service before. Uh, you take your, your card that's been paired beforehand. Um, the sensor is here uh, instead of on the side uh, on a normal blue car. Um, so you just hold it there. Uh, might take a bit, uh, but you'll just hear for the little click for the, the lock to unlock. Uh, then you go around um, and 
there's no button to press. Um, usually, well, we unplug this earlier, but we there will usually be a charging uh, port here. You just need to pull it out and place it back into the uh, into the station. There's no button to press like on the normal blue car. Uh, and you're ready to go. Okay, we'll see you inside. We are now inside the Opel Corsa, Tristan. Nearly a lot more space. How do we start this thing? Remember the blue car, the original one, the way they started, turned on the icon, a bit unique. How does this work? Yeah, so uh, it's a lot more modern, uh, a lot newer of a car. So you'll notice that we don't have any key anymore. It's a button press. So very, very modern. Uh, I'm going to turn on the radio here. Um, and as you can, if you look down here, there is no more gear lever as well. Uh, so like most of the uh, usual car, the usual modern cars out there, um, you'll notice that uh, it's just a, a little, a little, le little lever notch thing here. Um, so all we have to do is just to toggle into drive. Uh, with your foot on the brake, uh, you just press down twice and you're in the drive. Uh, and you've got your normal neutral and reverse, which you can toggle later. Um, but yeah. Um, after you toggle into drive, you just need to disengage the parking brake, which is not a lever, usual conventional handbrake. You just press this down and you're ready to go. Tristan, can I ask, what is B? So B is uh, an eco-friendly saving function. So it basically limits the power of your engine and basically makes it uh, a little bit less powerful, but more energy conserving. This car looks pretty clean. Well, so some people say, you know, when you come in a blue SG, right, you must bring your wet wipes. This video is not sponsored by that all. Is it myth or reality? <laughs> Tell us more. So personally, I, I've never had to wipe down a steering wheel. Uh, generally, I feel like um, some people are a lot more particular about hygiene, so uh, they'll feel more comfortable wiping down the steering wheel, and I think that's totally fine. Uh, for me, it has never gotten to a point where the steering wheel is like, oh my gosh, it's so gross, I must wipe it down. Um, but you know, generally, sometimes it might be a, bit, a little bit more sticky due to you know, sweat other people's using. Uh, I think it's totally fine, you wiped it down, uh, make it a bit more uh, hygienic, a little, a little bit cleaner before you settle. Yeah. What steps do you normally have? Kind of like a pre-launch checklist, like do you check the state of charge, condition of car, anything to give us for users as tips? Yeah, so generally um, I will, uh, once I get the car, I unlock the car, um, take a look at the condition of the car, walk around the car, make sure there are no damages. Um, so sometimes, um, I think in fact, just uh, the other day I encountered a tire puncture before I, I moved off. So it's very important to uh, make sure that the condition of the car on the exterior is okay. Uh, then coming into the interior, uh, I think just uh, having a look uh, at the general cleanliness of the car. Um, I haven't really ran into anything where it's like, wow, it's so dirty and like, you know, there's like, you know, rubbish everywhere in the car. Um, so usually it's, it should be fine. Um, and then generally in the blue car, they'll be able, um, sorry, not in the blue car, but um, in, in the app, you'll be able to uh, rate the cleanliness of the car, but that's at the end of the trip. Uh, but otherwise, um, I you know get in my seat, you know I check my mirrors, pull on my seatbelt, uh, you know ensure that I've reserved the station be beforehand where I'm going to park, um, and that's about it. I'm ready to set off. Listen, how does Blue SG reward users like you? If you keep the car very clean, very nice, what benefits do you get? Um, so generally. Um, Benefits being, um, so I have received, um, for being a long time user and a, a long time user in good standing, I have received a free membership. Uh, they have uh, given me uh, a sort of a waiver on like the membership fee that I have to pay uh, per month. Uh, generally also, um, you know, the, um, I, I have also received vouchers on like, you know, free, free minutes. They have credited free minutes into my trip before um, and things like that. So there, there are usually little things that they can do to deduct like costs and fees for you here and there. Okay, let's take off. Okay, uh, let me just get my mirrors. Everything, make sure we're safe and totally. You've been in Blue SG for a few years. You've ridden the original blue car. Mm -hmm. How does the new Opel Corsa compare to it? Well, the, it's definitely, um, in my words, a lot more luxurious, I feel. Uh, the finishings, um, basically the interior, and you, because it's st st still such a new car, you, you get that new car smell, which I really like. Um, so generally, it feels like you're riding in style. Uh, it's also lower towards the ground, so if you're a sort of a, lot, a, a bit more of a sporty car fan like me, it's uh, a lot cooler, I feel. 
Um, and generally, I, I do prefer the fact that the Corsa E um, feels a lot quieter when you, uh, when you set off. Um, when you are driving, especially on the highway, uh, the noise cancellation or the suppression is um, a lot better. Um, yeah, and I just feel like it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much more comfortable ride. It is, the small space. Yeah. Also, the iconic UFO sound, the toot 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 is not present on the Opel Corsa. Yes, that's right. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Do you miss the blue car UFO sound or do you prefer your EVs to be silent like this Opel Corsa? So we're just heading out for a short ride in the east. It's my first time in this Opel Corsa experiencing it. And just talk to Tristan about his journey so far, riding the blue car, riding this car. Get some tips from him. Tristan, yes. riding a ride-sharing car some people are sometimes a bit ganjong, right? Okay, mm. I must not get my car into accident because they heard that the insurance cost can be very high. Any myth to dispel here? Oh yeah, generally, um, I mean, as long as you're careful with the car, I, I don't think uh, if you get into an accident that really is not like of your fault. I'm sh like I'm I'm very sure that Blue SG uh, and their customer relations um, they will you know do their best to keep you covered. Um, Generally, so that you don't get um, you know overcharged or you know taken advantage of, um, so yeah, they, they do go that extra mile to ensure that you are protected, um, and they don't just go go out and you know point fingers. I I know that their investigation process, from what I've heard, does take uh, quite a bit of time, and they don't uh, you know draw conclusions like immediately. Yeah. One of the benefits of the original blue car is that it's smaller, so for irregular or newer drivers, it's an easier car to drive. How is it like driving this bigger Opel Corsa sedan? It definitely takes a bit of getting used to. Uh, it, it feels like a regular or in, in, in fact even a larger lamp car because the, the front of the bonnet is quite uh, long. Um, it def I, I've, been with, I've, I've been driving for quite a bit now. Um, so I think for me it has been, the getting used to it has been quite okay but I can definitely see it being an issue of being you know, a little bit more scary for newer drivers. Um, so yeah. Um, definitely, if you're trying this out for the first time, uh, do take it slow. Uh, I've heard of issues with the accelerator being a lot more sensitive than the blue car, so uh, do uh, just take it very gently if you are trying it out. Mm. For total newbies, would you recommend that they try the blue car first before the Opel Corsa? Oh, that's a, that's a good question actually. Um, my opinion is that um, the blue car can feel a bit weirder or essentially you know coming out from driving school um, okay but then again you have driven for a while now uh, for you to get a blue SG uh, membership but um, the blue car operates in a bit uh, more of a unique way than a normal car because I think uh, like when you let go of the gas pedal there's regenerative braking uh, and I personally feel that the regenerative braking in the blue car is a lot stronger than it is in the Corsa um, so it might feel a bit like, whoa, I press on the pedal, it goes and I let go of the pedal and it stops and it's like, it doesn't work like that in a normal combustion engine car. Um, but that being said, I do feel like if you're a new Blue SG member trying to get a feel for an electric vehicle, the blue car is uh, a little bit more forgiving considering the sensitivity of the accelerator. Um, and yeah, I do feel like you should start with a blue car first before you go on to a Corsa. Um, but yeah, yeah that's, that's just my opinion. <laughs> Basically, Tracer is saying, try which one you're more comfortable with, la. both have pros and cons. Pricing-wise, is this more expensive than the original blue car? No, absolutely not. It is the same price. So it depends on your preference, depends on your use case as well. So far, I'm liking it. As Tristan mentioned, it feels like a normal car. So if you've ridden a Honda, a Toyota and Grab before, right healing speeds, to me, very similar. Storage space. How much bigger is this compared to a blue car? Would you say it's like double the space? Uh, generally, yeah, pretty much double the space because you can push down the seats at the back, just like the blue car. Um, but because the Corsa is a, uh, a little bit longer, um, you can definitely fit like uh, double the amount of, you know, at, at, at almost double the amount of uh, stuff uh, as compared to the blue car's space. I agree. You, you can put down the seats. So if you're going to IKEA, you're going to buy furniture. This is a better rental than the blue car to me. Look at the space behind. We're heading back to the charging station right now.
Thank you so much, Tristan, for the great ride. Now, as we park, Tristan's going to show us, like, what do we do after we park the car? Yeah, so uh, right now I'm reversing, and you can see that very handily, we have a reverse camera on the Corsa. Uh, I'm going to switch it to neutral, and then I just press the P button here to put in the parking, uh, and I just engage the parking brake here. And we're good. We're ready to turn off the engine and return the car. And remember to charge a car. Yep. Anything else we need to do on the app? Um, it's the same as with a normal blue car. Um, all you have to do is uh, get out of the car, lock the door, uh, plug the, sorry, uh, tap your card on the station, plug it back in, uh, and you're good to go. Easy. Thank you, Tristan. I had a great ride with Tristan on the Opel Corsa. Your recent CNA article talking about whether to get private cars or car rental, and CNA insiders shared that Unless you're driving more than 100 km per day, it makes more sense financially for car sharing. But do you see a huge white space for Blue SG in Singapore? Yes, absolutely. You know, that's one of the key reasons that we believe, you know, um, consumers are getting smarter and smarter. Uh, and with everything around them getting more and more expensive, I think they are also seeing the real value of how to make full use of their money. So with car sharing, you basically only need to pay what you use. There is no uh, fixed cost, there is no maintenance cost, there's not even cleaning cost. So I think what is important is for the different users to assess based on their individual use case, what is most suitable for them. It's great to have this option. Today, top of mind for many drivers, whether the car owners or car sharing users, is that Singapore has record high COE. So there's this perception that it's the car rental or the car sharing companies that are bidding up the COE. Any points to disprove this myth or anything, any nuance to this topic? Well, I cannot answer on behalf of the rest of the operators, but I know for sure we, we are not playing up the numbers for sure. Even we, there are many times we don't even get, you know, a few pieces. Yeah, so I think there is a real hot demand now, but we don't know who's, who are the ones that are beating up all the, all the COEs. Are these Cat A cars? Yes, absolutely. So all the Blue SG speed currently are Cat A cars? Yes. Some users have remarked that Blue actually used to have a non-subscription plan, like can just come and go like a date. Today, is there a plan for Blue actually to bring that back? So, I believe you are referring to the weekly plan. So that was only in existence for the first one year when we launched the service. Uh, so that weekly plan basically allows members to get in and use the service for a week and then get out. But the, the downside is that they pay a lot more higher in terms of the per minute rate. Mm. So in, based on current uh, planning, we don't intend to bring back non-subscription days uh, by rentals. But, uh, you know, I cannot say that I'm close to that. I remain open to, to, to see how the demands shift. But for now, I can say that our members are pretty, or at least based on what we know, our members are pretty comfortable with our subscription model. Because anyway, um, the current model goes for the basic plan. Mm. Uh, it is a one-month subscription. So they always have the possibility of terminating uh, or stopping the subscription after one month. And if you are a new user who hasn't tried the service, by joining the, mem the, the service just for the first month, it is a trial membership. So you don't even pay a single cent for the trial membership. Yeah. So you have 30 days to decide. 30 days. It's kind of like most services where you get a 30-day trial. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Blue SG, you've upgraded your fleet. Yes. The Opel SG. You now have the blue car. Original blue cars still are here. Yes. So you want the UFO sound, you still have it. <laughs> Nostalgia. I missed that. I was telling Tristan, I missed that. Okay. That's a lot of corrector. With the fleet upgraded, now users are asking, what about the charging network? I believe most of the current charging network are 3.7 kilowatt AC. Yes. So as EVs get better, batteries get bigger. Yes. How do you see charging network proving? So, um, as you know, currently the charging infrastructure that BlueSG is using doesn't belong to BlueSG anymore. So, um, they are now owned by owned and managed by a third-party company. Um, but we are working closely with the third-party company. Um, they, you know, in the process of exploring how we can uh, further upgrade, you know, some of the stations. And on top of that, you know, we are also while while like you mentioned correctly, we have upgraded the number of cars that we have. The number, the, the models that we have, we are also looking at increasing more charging uh, stations, increasing our network 
So when we work on increasing the network, obviously we are going to work with um, better, higher speed charges. Yes. And that's win-win. Over the weekend when we were doing a charity drive, we had Polestars and also Teslas parking in these chargers to also charge the cars. Yes. Just top up a little bit while yes. Yes. waiting for a donation drive. Talking about Tesla, Tesla also recently unveiled their fleet plan. So Teslas have one of the highest efficiency, which means lower charging costs highest reliability and also very high safety which is good for the fleet operator the users and the communities as well but it's not just tesla there are many brands with good fleets also what does it take for do actually to consider tesla or other brands to be added to your fleet so the truth is um, we are fully open in looking at the various models various manufacturers of which of the models of cars that we are considering so it's as it's an exhaustive list that we are looking at uh, um, and the truth is we don't have a clear answer because it also depends on obviously the use case, um, the size, the length of the car, the price of the car and, and a, a lot of other you know, factors. Mm. And the, but what you can be rest assured is whichever model that we select, we always want to make sure we, we, we get the optimal model so that we can get the best price plan for our customers. Mm. Because at the end of the day, everything translates down to the cost. That's right. So I can get a really fancy car, but if it means that I have to pass on the cost to the user, then that is a consideration that we have to weigh very carefully. That's right. Yeah. So there will know, hopefully in the future, there could be options just like how Uber has tiers, right? Like the normal Uber, the Uber Premium. Maybe one day there'll be premium tiers as well. Thank you, Jenny. Thank for you for having me again. <laughs> sharing how Blue SG has evolved to meet growing demand. Car sharing is rising here. If you have any questions for us, please let us know down in the comments. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. You can try the new Opel Corsas and also the original blue car by downloading the Blue SG app. Yes. Prices are the same for both cars. Yes. Availability and of the fleet is growing. Click subscribe to stay updated with more videos on EVs. Take care. Thank you. Sometimes I just don't know what to say. This is normal. <laughs>